Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Galen Nuttall and this is Canadian Whiteboard Finance. This is the place where I take complex financial concepts and I explain them simply. I take my certified financial planner designation plus my background in education, my master's in education, crank up the whiteboard and draw things out so that Canadians like you can understand your options in a way that is clear and simply explained. Today, I'm going to talk about, okay, I'm super excited. I'm going to talk about corporate tax planning in Canada where the financial planner like me fits in to help incorporated Canadians saved on taxes. Now, uh, I'm super excited because I have not done this on my YouTube channel yet. Uh, this is really spurned on by a interaction I had with an Instagram influencer who is in Canada who did a quick blurb about how she's having to learn about taxes and corporate taxation. Quickly threw out a little thing there about how I help with this and she said she was intrigued, so I'm making this video, and all these other comments were coming in, and people were uh, following me and messaging me. You know, I'm new in business, I'm liking your channel, and so I realized I have been leaving my corporate peeps out to dry so far with my channel. So I'm gonna fix that today. Uh, I've given this talk to groups of business owners, I've given this talk to groups of doctors, chiropractors, um, veterinarians. So this works for a lot of people. Today I'm really gonna focus on the business owner entrepreneur crowd. I'm gonna talk very specifically about how I help them. So, uh, if you are in Canada and you have a corporation and you want to make sure you're making the most of it, this video is for you. So I'm going to crank up my whiteboard and get to it. As always with these videos, I do not know your specific situation. I have not sat down with you, not even unless you're my client. I haven't sat down with you to see how these work for you. I am going over broad strokes the way that I explain it to my clients when I sit down with them. But please do not make any changes to your own situation without first consulting your legal, tax, or financial planning advisors. I'm going to kick it off by explaining the corporate concept in general in a way that is very simple. So first I'm going to talk about what does it look like if someone doesn't have a corporation versus someone who does. Now I'm licensed in British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, Nova Scotia. I do all my meetings online. I have clients in all those provinces. I'm going to talk in broad numbers. Uh, provinces vary in their taxation, but the concepts work in each of those provinces. I've implemented them in each province, but I am, uh, the numbers I'm using are going to be a little bit round. So, um, you know, and so when it comes to someone, so this is someone getting paid personally, someone did not have a corporation and they were providing a service or selling something, they would get paid. Uh, and then, you know, it doesn't take long to move up to the 50% tax bracket in Canada. So a lot of times if someone's getting paid and they're making good money, they have, a, they have a thriving practice, um, they, they, someone pays them $100, but they end up with 50 because 50 of it goes to taxes. Now, enter the corporate structure, which I almost always draw as a circle. Beauty of the corporation is that that $100 can, will be made, and then instead of 50 dollars of that going to taxes, 90 of it, like I said, round number, different provinces are different, but I'm going to say approximately 90 of those dollars lands in the corporation and 10 of those go to taxes. Now this is the first place you can save on taxes, on the money coming into the corporation. And I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about the three places, then I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about each one. So this is the first place you can save taxes um, in the corporation is by helping out at the source. And this is particularly attractive. It works for lots of different corporations, but it's particularly attractive for people who have a business that's really thriving, bringing in more than 500,000 a year. So uh, the first 500,000 is taxed at a different rate than the, the money after that. So the first 500,000 of each 100, 90 of it lands in the corporation. But after that, like I said, depending on the province, it's gonna change, but approximately, instead of $10 going to taxes, $25 are gonna to go to taxes, and only 75 is gonna land in the corporation. So this is a big win for people, especially if they're getting up into that range, because they're saving even more than the people that have not gotten there yet. So that's the first place to save. Second place to save in your corporation uh, is uh, inside of the corporation. So if you were to take that $90, so the idea behind a corporation is that well, A, there's, there's legal reasons for having corporations. Uh, corporation comes from Latin corpus, which means body. It acts as an entity apart from the individual. Uh, so, you know, the assets are, are separate from the personal ones, which is advantageous. But then there's a financial planning aspect of it as well. Um, you know, corporations, the government is not, a, you know, they don't, they don't want people to just use them as tax shelters. So if someone were to take that $90 and invest it, so let's say this is like an investment that they're investing in that does not have to do with the corporation, fancy word is a passive investment, 
and that investment were to grow inside of the corporation, under normal, or, <laughs> under normal circumstances, the growth is going to be partially taxed. So this is the second place where someone can lose money to taxes. So second, let me delete that, two. This is the second place where people can save on taxes. And the third place, which is another big one, is when the money comes out to the individual. When I talk to people who have corporations, I say your global financial uh, setup is like a ship. And a well-structured corporation can act as a sail that's going to speed that ship up towards its destination. And a poorly uh, structured one can actually act as an anchor that actually slows down the progress. And that really comes down to whether taxes are being saved where they can be saved. And a quick side note on taxes, I understand why we pay taxes. All the strategies I'm talking about are completely approved uh, by the CRA. I'm not coming up with anything that is not approved by them. I understand why we pay taxes. I just don't believe in paying more than is necessary. I believe in paying what is due, but not more than that. Um, and I do believe in people having more of a choice. If someone wants to give that money to charity or someone wants to save for retirement, they should have that choice. So this is the third place where uh, money can go to taxes is when it comes out of the corporation. And that's the third place I save, help people save in the corporation. Now, when someone has these corporate planning strategies, the good news is, is that when they can take some of that tax and not pay it, that means that they have more money for themselves, more money for their business. Um, when I sit down with my clients, we come up with their long-term goals. So for every business owner, I say retirement has to be on the radar no matter how young you are. Um, I've met a lot of business owners in their 60s and 70s who are the type that said, I'm going to work my whole life, that find out that later in life their priorities, priorities have shifted. They don't want to keep working into their 70s and 80s. They want to have a way of flipping a switch and turning their corporation into a pension, turning their corporation into a, an income for the rest of their lives, which is exactly what I help people do. So retirement is usually on there. A lot of people look, um, a lot of clients I have look to um, want to be able to help their parents out later in life. People are living longer than ever, but not necessarily in the best of health. So a lot of my uh, clients start thinking about that. And then other things like cottages or vacations. Uh, you know, the kinds of things that people want to do with their money. Now, the problem is, is the more that people lose to these voluntary taxes, they have to start picking. Well, I'm probably not going to be able to, you know, they have to say, well, am I going to retire? Am I going to take care of my parents or am I going to buy that cottage? Um, well, you know, they'll say to me, well, I better delay that retirement because, you know, I'm not saying I can't save enough. Uh, better, you know, forget that cottage. I'll still try to take care of my parents. And I don't like seeing that happen. I like people being able to do everything that they want to in retirement. Now, these are the top three places. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about each one in particular. So and when it comes to this last layer of taxation, if people aren't careful, I have definitely seen it where people basically end up in the same place they would have ended up if they weren't incorporated, where that $100 that came in and they're left with 50, sometimes they're left with that same 50 by the time they get taxed here, here, and here. They've got the same 50. Uh, not to say that there aren't other reasons to incorporate, like legal reasons, but from a tax and financial planning perspective, it's almost like it hasn't been worth it. Now, the reason this happens so much, when I became an advisor and started working with corporations, what I found was that there's not a, a ton of great resources out there for people who have corporations to know what they should be doing. And part of the reason of that is, well, most financial advice out there, by my estimation, is created by employees for other employees. And I'm going to talk exactly about what I mean by that. So if you were to go to um, most financial planners, they'd talk about you know, RSPs and TFSAs, two most popular places for Canadians to save their money. Now, I'm going to make a bold statement here, but I've run the numbers 10 ways to Sunday. There are a lot of business owners out there who should not have tax-free savings accounts. And they should not have them because there are other things available in the corporate structure that are better for them than the tax-free savings account. I've run the numbers. I'm not saying that if you are a business owner and you have a tax-free savings account, I'm not saying to close it or anything like that. But what I am saying is I, do, I would not recommend people use that until they have made the most of these three other places to save taxes. And the RSP can make sense, but it makes more sense for long-term planning sake of a special kind of RSP that's available to corporations that I'm going to talk about. So when you're meeting with, um, if you're meeting with a financial advisor that does not understand corporate strategies, a lot of times they're just going to talk about the same things that they talk to the employees about, which, you know, there's, it's great that there's a lot of financial planners that understand how employees should be saving money. What I help business owners with is there's a bit of a misconception that business owners have to give up 
that safety net of a pension or have to give up that safety net of group benefits when in fact a lot of business owners can create that for themselves. They just have to be working with someone who knows how to do it. So all of these strategies should be part of a bigger plan which involves setting a goal, knowing what that goal is and working towards it. And you can check out my download, the, the free 30 minute guide to financial planning at gnotall.com slash guide. You can download that for free. Check it out. You'll also get access to my emails. I'll let you know when I'm getting new YouTube videos up. I'll let you know when I have podcasts up. I've done a bunch of podcasts around the corporate structure. I'll be sending those out as well. So be sure to check that out, the free 30 minute financial guide. Now I'm going to go into more detail on each of these three tax saving strategies. So the first one, like I said, is a corporate deduction. So the beauty of that is especially for people, it works for people uh, whose corporations are making uh, up to 500,000, but it's extra attractive to the corporations that are making more than that. And what it is, is it's a corporate pension. So the way that this works is the deposits that go into it are a deduction from the corporate earnings. So it's basically, you're investing that whole, you know, if you were to put $100 in a, into it, you really are putting $100 into it, um, not investing the 90, or if you were to bring it out to invest it personally, like in the tax-free savings account, by the time that 100 gets in your hands, a lot of times there's only 50 of it left, and that's what someone would be putting here. The beauty of this is they're putting it up here. So the corporate pension, that is a long-term savings strategy. The way to know if you qualify for it is usually what I do with my clients is when they are in their 30s, we start saving money either in the corporation or in their RRSPs to then move it into the pension. So all through their 30s, we're looking at getting ready for the day when it'll make sense to then start moving money into the uh, corporate pension plan. And that's something that can be invested. And then when you go to retire, it is an income stream coming out in retirement every year. So number two and three are a little bit of hybrid. They're kind of, they kind of go hand in hand in some ways. But um, two is basically there's types of investments that you can keep inside of a corporation, types of accounts that are um, tax preferential. Um, if you're not careful, things that grow inside of the corporation are taxed at the highest possible rate. Um, if you're from the first dollar, not like, oh, once I get to a certain point, it's taxed at the top rate. From the first dollar it's taxed unless you're using corporate preferred investments. And how to know if you qualify for this is the place where I start with all my clients is we figure out when they've gotten to a point where they can count on regular retained earnings inside of their corporation. And that's just a fancy word for is there some money left inside of the corporation that you don't need to run the company. So just to give an example, I talk to people and they say sure of the, of the money that's coming in I need a certain amount of it to run the company. I need a certain amount of it as an income to live my life. But then there's this excess that's in there that I'm not going to use. I usually set aside some for unexpected things or when, if someone, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, I, I'm, I'm almost always in a mastermind of some sort. My clients often are as well. Make sure there's some money there for that sort of a thing. But then like, what can you count on putting away regularly every year for, um, for a number of years? And once we know that number, plus when, the, uh, when you want to retire and what kind of money you'd need to do so, then we know exactly how much to put into each of the different places. So that to qualify for this, you have to know that you've got um, regular retained earnings in the corporation to start putting them away. And the third step is there's a special place to put your money inside of a corporation. Like I said, once I know the retained earnings, I figure out how much needs to go into two or three or you know, just I'll just say investments A, B, and C, or accounts A, B, and C. Um, there's a special kind of account that can grow inside of the corporation on a tax-deferred basis. It isn't taxed as it grows inside of the corporation, and you can actually borrow against it uh, in the later years of the corporation, thus helping the whole pension idea of, am I gonna have money coming out of my corporation in a tax-efficient way? Uh, so it is tax-deferred, so it's a corporate deposit fund, and the idea behind that is you're putting money away regularly uh, and some, at some point you'll be able to access it either by withdrawing it from there or by borrowing against it and getting it out of the company effectively into your pocket tax-free. And how to know if you qualify for this one is if you are able to put regular deposits into it, you can either do it monthly or annually. Most of my clients do it annually. They get to the end of the year and they say, okay, here we go. Going to write that check, going to put it in there. And the beauty of it is, is that it is one of the just most tax efficient places to put money inside of a corporation, passive earnings, passive assets. 
because it grows tax deferred. You can borrow against it to get it out of the corporation or leave it in there for a really long time. And I'm going to give you a bonus of how to save taxes in the corporation. If you create a emergency health fund inside of your corporation and end up not needing it in the later years, you can actually take the po deposits you put into it and pull those out tax free as well. It's uh, a longer term strategy. It's not as impactful as these three, but it's a beautiful way to supplement these as well as creating an account where you have the ability to write off your medical expenses as a corporate expense. That's also, people love that one. Uh, kids with braces, uh, you know, uh, people with, you know, regular medical expenses, you can actually write those off if you create a special kind of account uh, with your company, you can write those off regularly. So that's another way to save a lot of taxes with the corporation. Perfect. I hope that was helpful. A big overview over the top three places where I help my clients save money in their corporations. Um, one quick thing to say is that a lot of times people will say to me, when I tell them what I do, they say, oh, I already have an accountant or I already have a lawyer. I have clients who are accountants. I have clients who are CPAs. I have clients who are lawyers who have corporations and CPAs who have corporations. They use me as their financial planner because I cover an area of expertise that they don't cover with these strategies. And so if you're wondering, oh, I've already got an accountant. They've already told me about these things. They may or may not have. I find that accountants are very willing to sign off on these ideas when I bring them to the table, but they're not always comfortable bringing them to the table because it's a bit outside of what they normally cover. Perfect. Questions in the comments below. I'll answer them all. And thanks for watching.